I didn't get into boxing the same way most people that I know did. I didn't start from a young age and have like dreams or aspirations to become like a champion boxer. For me, I was more into martial arts, MMA, things like that back then. So I've been doing that for most of my life up to that point. But then it wasn't until my dad took me to my first boxing session where I really saw how hard it was because I wasn't really keen on it, but I just thought, you know what, let me just try this out. And I did, and my first two sessions back in, I think it was 2015, they were really, really hard, and I kind of realized how hard it really is. But even back then, I never really fell into it properly up until a couple years later. I've been an amateur for about ah, four years now, but I hadn't actually fought until after my first year. So I tend to be an amateur for another four or five years. I want to go the GB route and go into GB, box in the Olympics, the Commonwealth, and then take it from there. I started when I was younger doing karate with my siblings and then from there took it to taekwondo a bit older when I was doing it by myself then judo and then I kind of took a little bit of a break for a few years then got into rugby things like that and then from rugby I transitioned into MMA just just for fun really but then when I moved house and then MMA gyms nearby there's only a boxing gym so I just thought why not just go there and then the coach offered me an opportunity to fight I just thought why not like I'm not really afraid to fight let me just fight for fun and then I won my first fight then from then it kind of just took off a little bit and um, from then I've had like a lot of fights, a lot of ups and downs, points I wanted to quit but what kept me going was the fact that I realised I actually had talent in the sport and if I didn't think I had a talent in the sport I wouldn't have, taken, I wouldn't have bothered taking it further, I would have been like okay it's a hobby and that's all it is but when I really saw me progressing at such a, such a rate compared to like people that I've been boxing with that have been doing it since they were kids I thought I've only been doing this for like a few years but I'm competing with guys that are at top level so I thought if I can compete with them at top level give me a few more years of experience and training whatever I'll be there as well for me it's just for me I mean I'm doing boxing for myself to be the number one in boxing fame and money and all that kind of stuff yeah they're good incentives but that's the thing they can only take you so far you know Mayor always says can't feed your kids with legacy but at the end of the day through legacy comes money for uh, providing you play your cards right obviously but I feel like if I can become number one in the sport I'm doing it for myself and a lot of people they're doing it for like external factors but I'm doing it truly for myself to be number one and I can say I'm number one and all that money stuff and everything like that that will come with the number one status yeah so obviously having grown up being homeless at points and not knowing when, you're, when, you're, when your next meal is going to come and like being in a hostel with like random people it develops a lot of like bad habits and coping mechanisms and it, it was it was difficult because you don't really know at the time especially when I was a bit younger I, I kind of just like glossed over it a little bit and um, I'm trying to think how would I really value it away spend on that I feel like for me Unlike a lot of people in the same situation that I was in, I had like a lot of morals that kind of kept me who I was and that was the main thing, not kind of losing who I was in the process because I knew certain things weren't good, like I couldn't then, because I was, obviously I was broke, I couldn't then just go out and rob someone or go out and start selling drugs or whatever. And I felt like if I did then I compromised who I was and that's why I didn't want to lose because yeah, a lot of people they kind of change and they become someone different after something bad happens to them but I really didn't want to change and lose my morals that I kind of grew up with despite the situation that I was in so I, it wasn't really a case of keeping hope because <clears throat> I didn't really have much hope in where the future would lead me but I just thought as long as I stay true to myself then I can sleep better at night even if it's not in the ideal situation like it could be in a hostel I'm not going to sleep well but I can sleep better knowing that it's still me. Um, well obviously having come from being homeless and whatnot the discipline for me I kind of found it through a mixture of different things. I think it was more experience that I kind of found discipline because my dad, he's always taught me to like, be disciplined and all that. But I'd always just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And not really take it to heart. But a few things that have happened in life where I've kind of lost my way a little bit. I kind of realized after a while that there's a lot of um, turmoil inside me when I walked back in the past. There was where even though I've been training and whatnot, training hard, being focused in school, things weren't resolved inside of myself and I feel like it's because of not really the things I've done but the, the, the habits I had and the kind of like things like that so what I started to do was I really started to 
like work on the inside out if that makes sense so obviously training is all good but if you're inside if you're inside you're not stable or balanced then it's going to show in one way or another so i started working on my faith a lot working on my faith a lot and also my discipline my daily habits so even now there's a lot of things that i think that oh i'm not proud of in my life that i need to change but I'm still working on it, if that makes sense, but before I used to just kind of leave it and think, you know what, it's fine, no one will ever find out. And yeah, that's all well and good, you don't have to really tell anyone, but it's the fact that even if you don't tell anyone, you can't just leave it and ignore it for yourself. You've got to really face it, even if it's just facing it for yourself inside and just dealing with whatever issue you have, whether it's um, working on it, maybe trying to balance it out, maybe do some good deeds, whatever it is. As long as you feel balanced on the inside, then everything else will kind of just flow out afterwards. I started parkour about um, 15 months ago, and I started during first lockdown because during first lockdown I was a bit bored because there was only running and shadow boxing and home workouts. So I've always kind of liked parkour and things like that, and I was bored. I was like, you know what? Let me just start a new hobby. So I messaged one of my friends who does uh, gymnastics and flips. And I asked him, I just said, do you want to do parkour? And he said, why not? So, obviously during first lockdown, there was no one really around, like out and about. So we kind of just used that to our advantage and started just going to different sports around London. And just kind of like working within our ability and just doing like small things here and there. I mean, now that I've done it for about 15 months, like I said before, I feel like now it's more than just a small hobby. I mean, obviously I don't do it all the time, but I feel like there's a lot of, um, it helps you with a lot in terms of creativity because obviously you see things around you, you can experiment with things around you as well. And obviously you need athletic ability to be able to do this stuff as well. So I feel like a lot of like balance, uh, agility, power, speed, so things like that. It really does like kind of, um, it filters into boxing a little bit where I didn't really realize it, but when I came back to boxing, I was a lot faster and stronger and more powerful, a lot more balanced and because of what I've been doing. But you don't really think about it when you're having fun, you're just having fun, you're doing flips, you're doing jumps, whatever. But then you kind of realise the effect of it when you go back to boxing. And it's like, that's actually a form of training as well. And I'm not really scared of getting injured. I mean, only because I work within my means. Like I do like a lot of preparation before every single jump I do. Like everything I do, and that you see I do, I prep and prepare for it. So I go through the stages and the processes. So I know 100% within myself, I know if I can do it or not. It's literally just creating freedom really, like just being able to literally look at the environment and be like, oh, I can make something out of that. Like, I can do some jumps here and there, make it look nice and flowy, do some flips as well. It's just literally for fun, like, obviously there's different forms of art. Boxing is a form of art. You have like, obviously your normal standard art, painting, whatever. But I feel like parkour is kind of that part of that as well, but it's a bit more relaxed because unlike boxing where it's art but within like war, per se, parkour is just what you make of it really. You can just be out about anywhere, see a few walls, think why not, maybe record it, and then it comes out nice. I feel like I kind of found it through boxing, but not in the sense that when I started it, I found discipline, whatever. Okay, I was still quite not disciplined throughout boxing. I wasn't smoking or drinking or anything like that, but just daily habits I had in my life, I wasn't really focused. Even though I was focused on boxing, in the grander scheme of life, I wasn't disciplined. And boxing kind of brought it to light, like, say I'd lost a fight here or there, whatever. Losses, bad days at the gym. They would all be because of something, but I just thought maybe it was because of my training, so I tried to train harder, but sometimes it's deeper than just training. Sometimes it's on the inside, what you're feeling on the inside. Maybe you're frustrated that one day. You can be as fit as you want to be, but you're frustrated. Your mind's not in the right place. And you get beaten up. Well, not, not beaten up, but you don't do as well as you think you can do. And then you have to really think, why did I not do as good as I think I can do? I'm fit, I'm strong. What's, what's going on and that's when you really start to like realize it comes down to discipline and what you do in your daily habits and the better your daily habits are the more you can really bring your true self out without feeling some kind of way obviously you're going to have bad days but if you can reduce the number of bad days you have then the better so obviously you're going to try and do that i think it's just what you want to make of yourself really because a lot of people they kind of think in the moment i can make these decisions that are going to benefit me but if you think long term, like even 20, 30 years down the line, you look back on the things that you did, you can be proud of it. And also, like, that's not really a fulfilling life, really. Like, you can do all these things, like petty crimes, whatever. And, like, I'm not going to say that 
I can't really understand why they wouldn't they would do that because I can't understand why and I understand very well but at the end of the day are you really going to be proud of it and yeah people might say oh it doesn't matter at the moment yeah because now I have these things but it's like are these things really going to make you happy because they're not they're not going to get out of the situation that you're in you can have all the Gucci and Versace belts you want but if you live in the council estate it doesn't mean anything whereas if you work hard I don't know if it's so cliche to say it but if you work hard and obviously go for something that you love you may not be in the, ham the hamster ham ham suburbs or whatever but at least you'll be in a better position where you can say I'm happy with my life but I'm not doing anything that, com that compromises my moral code I think it's more than because obviously in pro boxing yeah it's all good everyone wants to rush into time pro but for me it's something different about just fighting in the Olympics being an Olympian like, it's something that no one can take away from you like there's so many pro boxers that just turn pro they're no good they get bashed up in their British title fight but being the, being an Olympian fighting at the very very top level of amateurs and getting a medal getting gold medal beating everyone literally it's just something different about that because then you can truly call yourself the number one because especially at that level as well like the Olympic level there's a lot of boxers there that are better than most professionals not all professionals but most professionals so being able to say you're an Olympic medalist Olympic gold medalist silver medalist bronze medalist shows you're really the top of your class and that's what I want to do before I go pro because then I can really say yeah I've done everything I wanted to do I'm an Olympian that's going to be down in history and then go pro and make my money from there I would say like I'm a very uh, I'm a very elusive boxer I don't even know if that's crowd pleasing some people may not like my style but I feel like whatever works for me kind of works for me but I feel like my style is definitely, definitely an eye pleasing style I don't think anyone would really get bored watching me per se but I don't know man, some people don't like, cock they, they call it cockiness when you're a bit expressive of your, of your style, especially in boxing where I am, I'm a very expressive boxer but some people don't like that, it is what it is, people will come and watch it anyway because they don't like it, so yeah. What people can expect to see from me in the next five years, a few national titles on GB for certain and boxing in either Paris or on my way to Sydney 2028.